When it came to my expectations of the future, there was nobody I had in mind and nothing that I had planned. And then Sunil walked in and literally pretty much swept me off my feet. Way, we're here. We've just been out, rented a bike, decided to see what we could find. Just look at this. It's a totally secluded private beach with not a soul for miles. Sunil brought magic into my life. There was no expectations, no future thoughts of where we were headed. It was just living in the moment and living with the magic in our lives then and there. Well, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. When you have a child, everything changes. He eats like, he eats like his dad. He's always been the happiest child I have ever seen, and that absolutely comes from Sunny. Ah, hello. Look at him, the need for speed. Good boy. We very much felt like we had a charmed life. Yes. Happy. Are you happy? Sunil made it feel safe and he made it feel possible. On the way around to... You know the combination for the dishwasher. <sighs> there was no way we could anticipate what was coming towards us. Hello no way we could perceive how devastating it was about to become. Two twenty-nine in the morning. Uh, so I was just been up most of the night. I remember driving back in the car after Sunil was told he had heart failure in a very poor way, in the middle of a waiting room, where he was told that these are the results of your scans, basically your heart's failed and you're not going to get any better. What's happening, Sonny? I've got cramp in my legs. Heart failure is when the heart is unable to pump as strongly as, as it should be able to do. Ow! Okay. Ow! A heart attack can lead on to the development of heart failure. That is, if you have irreversible damage to the heart muscle, for many patients that's the start of the journey into heart failure. Heart failure is a huge problem in the UK. We know there's a million people living with heart failure in the UK currently. There's approximately 200,000 patients being diagnosed each year, which is as common as the four most common cancers. I think part of the hard bit isn't, you know, the health has its consequences in that it's just more pressure and it's, that it's, it's that's trying what to, I find hard. Trying to maintain a normal family life yeah. under extraordinary circumstances. Because yes. you have heart failure, I feel like I'm missing out on stuff that I should be doing. You are? What, what kind of things do you think you're missing out on? Most sons and dads just play catch together, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Stuff like catch. Life. We want a normal life, which that's what we're fighting for. Well, our life is never normal. Our life is never normal, and that's fine. We don't want it to be boring, no, but I mean, I want a little life bit of stability. Be, you know, our normal. Families have all different types of problems. <laughs> the thing that we had to face was heart failure. This is mine. That changed our family, and it changed the way that we lived our lives. We wanted to share that with people and tell our story so that we could help other people. And this is our story. Claire says I'm sometimes a bit too serious in front of the camera. So just to make up for it, a joke my dad told me. Two atoms in a pub. And one atom says to the other, do you know, I think I've lost an electron. And the other atom says, are you sure? 
And he said, yes, I'm positive. <laughs> What do you? That's brilliant. Much better. <laughs> brilliant. Thanks, Dad. My name is Sunil Modi Nichols. On the 13th of August 2014, I suffered a massive heart attack. I suddenly felt a sharp pain in my back, a pain in my arm and my elbow, and a tingling which then moved to a burning sensation in the lower jaw and the gums. And I'm sat there thinking, I can't be having a heart attack. I can't be having a heart attack. I'm 47. I'm fit. I'm active. A heart attack is when there's been a narrowing in one of the heart arteries, and then suddenly it becomes blocked off by a clot of blood. And if you can imagine that beyond where that blockage is, there's an area of heart muscle that would be expecting to receive a blood supply, and suddenly it doesn't get that blood supply. When I think back, Sunil was in such a bad way. His heart was fully blocked in various places, which meant it couldn't function as it was supposed to. I slowly became aware that I haven't just had a heart attack. I've got heart failure. I first heard that and I just cried. Cried, my heart's failed. I have failed. I don't want to hear failure. I'm not used to failure, I'm a success. I've got no idea at that time what heart failure was. Heart failure happens after there has been an insult to the heart, and that can be an acute insult to the heart, like a heart attack, or it can be, an, it can be a chronic insult. So over many, many years, for example, if someone's got high blood pressure, putting the heart under stress for, for many, many years. Remember, we're late, Hi, it's now 25 past. Bye, Smiler. We're going to have to pedal fast, Tyler. You are. Look at that helmet. Is he going to school or is he going to war? Right. Love you, darling. Love you. See you. See you. Bye. Bye. With Sunil unable to work, suddenly we were a one-income family. It was important that I kept working and kept my job in the theatre, where I've now been for 13 years. Hello! Hello! Where? Hello. You alright? I'm okay. Yeah, good, good, good. I need to know that everything's alright at home, that Tyler is fed, getting ready for bed, that Sunil's alright, not having any problems. Then I can shut that down and focus on my job. Right, that's me. That's you. Go ahead. I love you. That's the house egg. Oh, Shan, thank, thank you. you. Oh, see you later. Thank you, Mr. Sir. If you want to come back, get a side roll, please. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of research reading. I also get stuck in front of the TV now and again. More than now and again. With things like mind numbing TV. When I come to work, I'm not isolated anymore. And it's one of the things I always think about with Sunil is that he's left a home alone, in a bed, with no one to talk to except me and people he talks to on the phone. <clears throat> Heart failure is very much a physical illness that impacts the mental state of mind. The bedroom, the old den of delight, Suddenly it becomes a medical treatment room. Many people in Sunil's family have been impacted by heart troubles or heart failure. His father in particular passed away from heart failure. Mr Modi, who was 59, had suffered from a heart condition for several years. What's quite weird about reading that, when you're 51 and he was 59, <laughs> Do you know, I keep saying to you, your story is not your dad's. 
but the longer we go on this journey, the more I feel like... The more it parallels, isn't it? It gets a bit close. You feel written off and you feel like heart failure is very much treated as a, as a disease where there are, because there are no cures, that there's nothing anyone can really do other than stop the decline or make you comfortable or in Sunil's case we just didn't get any information to begin with we didn't get any any information we did get was just a leaflet which isn't always enough you can't process that in the same way as somebody sitting down and talking you through something come in hi Caroline Hello. how are you I'm all right come on in it's very nice cold it's oh, freezing out there oh let me take your coat had a good day so far. Uh, yes, not a bad day. I think she was heaven sent. That's the only way to describe Caroline, is that she is absolutely heaven sent and has been with us for the you know the most the the, the darkest parts of our journey. So Nella, it's been five years almost that we've known each other. Yes. I remember the time uh, the cardiac rehabilitation prepared me to meet to meeting you then said that you'd had this severe heart attack at the Lister and um, primarily I think you were you were struggling to come to terms with the diagnosis you'd had a real shock the the psychological impact I think was was very real it was very hard you did need extra help we referred you to the clinical psychologist quite early on fantastic I think it's the best thing that ever happened yeah um, at that time, there was a lot of um, uh, confusion. There was a, uh, a complete change in lifestyle, mm. a lifestyle which had no limits now, had limitations on everything. And coming to terms with that and having the acceptance of that was difficult to assimilate. But you actually, know. even though you were struggling, I remember I met my match there. You had this steely determination you and Claire, you were um, <laughs> quite phenomenal in um, in demanding lots of information. In hindsight, we were determined to find mm. out. You were. And there, there was a determination for us to become better informed. Who in your family has had any form of cardiovascular, vascular, heart? Who's had what? This is not a very good one. Okay, my grandfather, father, mother, uncle, sister, brother, brother, me. Yeah. It's key that heart failure patients and their families seek information in whatever format is best for them. They can bring that back to the healthcare professionals and as a team we can work through that together to help interpret it in the best way that helps them move forward. Heart failure isn't necessarily going to mean you're going to die then and there. That's the, yeah. the impact of it is, is... Your heart has failed. You, you, yeah. you are going to die then and there. Yeah. The doctors spend half their time trying to say, look, if you manage it and you take medication, there's every chance your heart function will improve. And, uh, but immediately with the term failure, if That's you have failed, you cannot succeed again. Yeah. It's, it's absolute. Feeling. Yeah, I remember that feeling. When we sat in that waiting room and yeah. he said, it's, it's, your, your heart has failed, it's not going to get better. Yeah. There was a finality to it. Yeah. And we had to claw ourselves out of that yeah. to a feeling of hope again. Yeah. You really need to have wins when you suffer from a disease that affects every aspect of your life. You need wins. Because otherwise, why are you alive? What are you doing it for? Who loves getting up at five o'clock in the morning? We're getting up early to um, go on holiday to Whitby, um, place of my childhood. Because the story goes, Tyler, your granddad had a heart operation. It's and after day. about a year, we went to Whitby. And we got there and he said, my goal is to climb these steps, the 199 steps. And uh, beside him, not much older than you, and um, he made it. Took him a long time, but we made it. For my father, um, that, you know, his condition of heart failure um, and coronary heart disease 
um, didn't just affect his body, um, it had affected his mind as well during the times of the operation. So it wasn't just the heart. And it was the first time I got the concept that your heart just doesn't pump blood around your body. It powers everything. Look Daddy, at this. Are you nervous about doing your 199 steps? I am a little bit. By all accounts, all clinicians, medical staff are like, yeah, go for it, but, <laughs> but secretly they're all gritting their teeth. And, well, and me, uh, when, when I asked him about it, and he, you know what he's like, he's like, yeah, of course, do it, yeah, and everything. Even he went, yeah, yeah no, sure, but maybe you want to go down, down. the steps. It's a lovely view. Yeah, that's, that's a 96%. Heart rate's only 94. That's actually surprising, isn't it? I did, yeah, so, yeah. So actually, it's doable. And actually, your heart rate's coming back down quite quickly. It was important to achieve these things because it would give strength, strength of mind, strength of body. There you go. Guess what that is? 199 steps. So why is it important to you? Try and explain it to me. My dad did it. It was his ultimate goal. It's those kind of goals that my father set that have inspired me to keep going. This is the day we're supposed to do the 199 steps. And this is the state of Sunil. I had a, um, a cramp crisis where my body goes into complete and total cramps. Really bad. I couldn't make it up the stairs. Never mind the 199 steps. This step is beginning to be my mountain. One I just can't seem to climb. It shouldn't hold this much um, emotion to it, but it does. For him, it wasn't just, oh, well, I didn't get up the steps. It was symbolic of I'm never going to get better and I'm never going to be the man that I used to be, the father I want to be, the husband I want to be. It's a double life. It's like one life you put up happy-go-lucky when deep down your condition wants to take over. You've got to fight. You've got to stay alive not just stay alive here, in your heart, in your body, but stay alive up here. It's the most important place. It's a supply of blood to my heart that has, um, not, is not working. The only other option is to take a retest, and that would be the equivalent of a heart transplant. I don't know whether I'll get accepted for a heart transplant. Statistically, I shouldn't live long enough to uh, see him into secondary school. Not statistically. And how was your day? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. I want to see him get married. I want to grow old with my wife. I want to be a granddad myself. He's got one party like a swimming kit. I'm going to ask, are you staying long? <laughs> if you think of nearly a million people having heart failure, there are only a few hundred on a waiting list. I'll tell you what, let's put this in the back. So the chances of actually getting on a waiting list and passing an assessment is statistically very difficult to begin with. Once you're on that waiting list, you can wait for up to three years to actually get the heart transplant. There's not enough donors. You need to be in your absolute best shape. Are we ready to do this? We'd spent so much time getting him healthy and making sure his kidneys were just at the right optimum level, that his liver was okay. Everything that we had done up until that point was about 
fixing Sunil or giving him more time. The hearts are so rare, it's not like they're in abundance, that when they give them they have to be selective that the person is going to die or something else. Mm. Um, There's no, they don't take any chances at they all. They won't take any chances at all. Although it's obviously a risk every time, but they will maximise the chance of success as much yeah, as they op can. Optimise it as best they can, won't they? We were nervous enough about going through the assessment and everything, but we realised that we actually find out on the day. You're not finding out any small detail. You're not going through just another process. It's your last chance. I'm going to take your coat. Sorry. I'm going to take your coat. Every hope and dream was based on this assessment. Do you think they'll say yes? I don't know. That's in the hands of God, if you believe in such a thing. The transplant was the difference between we will survive this to we are not going to survive this. <laughs> it said no, basically. <laughs> Lung function test wasn't adequate enough. Too much pulmonary pressure. For a new heart to take and they're worried about kidney function, liver function. Vascular. Vascular issues. It's all way, way too risky for them. And this is nothing we didn't already know. But. We came into it knowing. But there's, no, there's no hope along that line. The only hope I've got is the fight and the determination. And I don't know how long it's going to last. I really do not know. It just gets harder to fight every day. And we don't have any choice. It seems not right that we're in such a beautiful setting. <sighs> it's perfect we're in a beautiful setting. First light of dawn, you touch my sky. <laughs> Casting your light so far and high. Bringing warmth to my soul giving chase to the dark as your love softly shines upon my weary heart. I think that week was probably the hardest week we had faced. You feel very, very powerless watching your partner go through it and that's really, really difficult, but I can do research, I can look on the internet and I could try and equip us as best as possible of, right, this is what we're doing, and it was something to do. Had a lower rate of the primary composite cardiovascular outcome and a Good. Two different types. The patients, let's see who the patients are. Uh -huh. Elderly men? No. The reality is they are both men and women. Part of your treatment yeah. is also your care. Yeah. So we spent the first part of your journey First of all, not even knowing you had heart failure. GP should be aware, however fit that person looks, send them off to a cardiac team. I feel this is probably one of the most poignant bits of information that I could part with. You can be very alone with things when you haven't got people helping. I thank every day that we are the people that we are because it was because I did all the research on the internet and it was because I wanted answers that we found the people we needed. So in the past, heart failure has been thought of as a disease of the elderly, weakened hearts after many heart attacks, nothing we can do, and actually, you know, that patient needs to be considered for palliative treatment. There isn't that many options. That game has changed quite considerably, that, that whole attitude has to be rethought of. So no, lovely to see you again. <laughs> lovely to be How here. How are you buddy? Well winter time's hard. When you've got people like Amit and you've got people like Caroline, they can look after both of us. Eventually our new EPR system will allow patients access to their own um, results. 
One so of the so things so. we've always appreciated is the way that you pull the graphs up and you show us and you talk yeah, through it, and right. it's not just being talked at, it's being included in our own, in his own care. Well, um, it's not surprising, because you know, it's, it's everything, isn't it? It's just your map everything, of life, isn't it? It's everything, but not everyone <laughs> thinks that way. There's overwhelming data that patients do better when they're managed by specialists, and again, the cancer analogy, would someone um, with a diagnosis of cancer want to go and see someone who wasn't a specialist in cancer? Would you want your relative to do that? The answer, of course, is no, and it should be the same, same for, for heart failure. I could have had testicular cancer instead. I could have had prostate cancer. Why would have been sat down in a room and explained to me the mortality rate, how people survive, how people cope living with this? Just leaving Barnet Hospital and we popped into this little pop-up shop almost on the side of the front doors. They've set up all of the leaflets and the information available for cancer sufferers, all different types. That is the bit that's missing with heart failure. The bit that focuses on the person, mm. focuses on the information they receive, focuses on a support network. People want to hear your story and see the person. And I believe that if you do that, if you show them who you are, then people are willing to be more receptive. So, Mr. Modi Nichols, it appears you've been leading two lives. One of these lives, you worked for communications and data software company, pay your taxes, a father to your child, and help your wife carry out the garbage. The other life is spent in the bedroom or in a medical day treatment room where you have second class heart failure. One of these lives has a future and the other does not. Hmm. This is supposed to be a sad documentary story and I just think we're strong, we're happy, we're okay, we have the energy. You need to project that you're strong, happy and okay. Quite an exciting morning. I'm going to meet some fellow heart patients, heart failure patients and to talk about their experiences um, living with the condition. So um, it's the first time, so it should be quite exciting to meet other people like myself. Sunil is very much the type of person that, do you know what, he can bear a lot if it's just him. As soon as he sees anybody else going through something, that's intolerable. I think a pivotal point for Sunil was when he met with a small patient group and he could see his own suffering reflected in others. Sunil is doing this, and this sounds very altruistic, but I mean it. Sunil is doing this for all the people that can't. Nice to meet you, Steve. I'm Sunil. Yeah, and is, is it Lisa, is Lisa, it? Yeah, yeah nice, to, to, nice to meet you. I'm Sunil. He understands the debilitating effect of heart failure. First of all, the people that could have avoided it and could never have ended up in this situation, then the misdiagnosis, then once you have it, it's so exhausting that how do you speak up for yourself? How do you fight for yourself? What shocked you about it? Well, because when you hear failure, you just think, like, it's a big word, and you just think, oh, God, like, you know, is he going to die? Yeah, no. You just think, oh, no, it's going to fail, like, <laughs> really quickly, and that's it, it's all finished. Especially when you have your family around and people hear that word. You know, it's like, they're not going to make it. And then we start mm. to do things with an attitude of that we're not going to make. <coughs> I want to get all thinking about it. Um, no, it doesn't matter. That's why we're all here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I'm going to be okay. Yeah. You know, but I had this moment of complete fear for a moment. You know, I needed something to to root me, to make me think. Okay, yeah, I'm going to. This there is, is what a, I'm going to aim There is for. a tomorrow. Yeah. And I needed something. I was given an outpatient appointment to go for a scan. Yeah. You know, an ultrasound. Yeah, an ultrasound. 
and they told me afterwards. They sat me down and told me. I've been alone with this for a very long time. Right. Claire's been alone with this for a very long time. Sorry. <laughs> it's the first time I've spoken to people with heart failure when I've not been in hospital in a bed next to them. Good to meet you all. Thank you, nice. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll just wait to <laughs> We just want to be in the defibrillator. Yeah. Ultimately, a problem aired is a problem shared. Yeah. Did it make you feel less... You always say that one of the things about the condition is it can make you feel quite lonely. Did it make you feel less yeah, lonely? It, it, yeah, the thing was, I didn't feel isolated. OK, heart disease symptoms and causes. It was the turning point for him to go, actually, I have a voice and I need to say something about these things and I need to do something about it. We wrote letters, we contacted charities, governing bodies, and over the next few weeks, we went to meet them. Let's go. My father, if there was a David against a Goliath, he would take on that cause, always. He was a compassionate person. Can you get in that side? Yeah, Right, I'll go around the other side oh, then. Okay. And ultimately, hopefully my story, well, gain support. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Well. Very, very nice well. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you too. The next 20 years would put my son at 30. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's what we do now can make the fundamental difference. Yeah, I agree. You know, heart failure is increasing in prevalence. There's more and more people with heart failure. I think you've got to get it on the top table in terms of the political agenda. Hi. Hi, welcome to Parliament. Thank you very Lovely much. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you both. There's a language surrounding um, heart failure which needs to be, an awareness needs to be brought um, forward. Well, what I can try to do is perhaps get you some time to go and talk to one of the health ministers who's engaged in this process yeah. of working with NHS England to settle their priorities. We've spoken to different people now. We've done the slowly building momentum and getting through to people and making contact with people. And we're now in this realm of the more voices we have, uh, the more people we reach. Hi, Claire. I've got a letter today from the House of Commons. As we agreed, I'm writing to the Secretary of State of Health and Social Care, Matt Hancock. MP, yeah. uh, in support of your campaign and to request a meeting with the Health Minister to discuss the prevention and early detection of heart conditions. Tyler was very aware this morning. Um, I'm going out there to help people, um, is his understanding. When he got invited to the Labour conference, it's a moment where you go, actually, this could be the turning point to everything. So I'm still quite nervous, very nervous. I don't know what I'll be saying at the conference. Well, I do know what I'll be saying, but I don't know how it will come across. At times you think, OK, fine, I can achieve anything because I've got nothing to lose, you know. Um, but I've got an objective, and the one thing I would hate for to happen is that objective to be miscommunicated, that objective to be um, to be sidelined by a uh, a fumble or a uh, or a mistake, and and it all go wrong. I was admitted into hospital every three to six weeks with various forms of heart failure related conditions. So right, you see, it's useless without me. <laughs> My heart hasn't failed. It's just not working as well as it should. Thank you. I'll never forget today. And meeting you has been a real privilege. No. Thank you for that. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And, you know, what you're doing can make a difference for the people. And that's why it's extra important, what you're doing. 
it motivated me because I, I had tears in my eyes when I was watching it. So um, because I've seen so many patients over the years who've gone down a similar path, the, I think where the change has got to come is that your, it happened to your father, it happened to you. We can't let it happen to the, next, to the next generation. Genetics is a loaded gun and we don't teach people how to handle that gun. And this is, has implications for Sunil's son. You know, we, we need to really talk about what should be advocated for him going forward. This kind of thing may be bringing awareness with this generation that we never had. Doesn't it? Sunil can't leave the house much, so he's doing things from his bedroom and from his house to going out into the world to take his message to people who have power to make a difference. I'm very proud of my husband, very proud of him, because he's very brave and these are words you hear but until you experience it you don't understand how much it takes to be brave in this situation. Does anyone here know how much a combined BMP and enhanced troponin test costs the NHS? 20 quid. Could I ask you to raise your right hand? If you think someone might have heart failure and that blood test is normal, you're, you're almost 100% sure that they don't have heart failure, so it's used as a rule-out test. If it's abnormal, the patient should then go on to have a, a, a specific test looking at the structure and function of the heart called an echocardiogram. We're making connections and I suppose if you start making connections that is progress. <laughs> We're in a mixed relationship. We have a disability. I'm a mother that's earning. You know, we fit so many different political categories and that if we can stand up and go, do you know what? We work hard, we stand up for ourselves, we provide for ourselves, but we need help. Not because we're lazy and not because we can't do it, but because we're in a really bad situation. So, yeah, will it be listened to? I don't know. Uh, is it worth trying? Absolutely. Hi, nice to meet you. Really hello, nice to meet you. hello. Really nice to meet you. This is Sunil, I'm just going to say Hi, hello. I'm so sorry that, um, that you can't be with us. Uh, I'm very sorry myself, I had an unfortunate event yesterday. Yeah. Um, while, whilst I was receiving treatment. Yeah, well I hope this, well, I hope this counts. <laughs> yeah, it does. We've got nearly one million people in the UK living with heart failure now. Um, what's your understanding of this and how we can improve this for sort of for future generations? Well, so the um, the first thing to say is, uh, you know, this Sunil's case and what's happened to him is a it's just so it's such a touching and moving story, and because you've gone out of your way to do everything possible, yeah. not only of course relying on the NHS, yeah. but actually taking. Okay. You know, taking every step that yeah. you can, yeah. um, and um, we've got to push ahead with trying to find uh, new drugs and new treatments, yes. and they uh, come on stream from time to time, and that's great. Yeah. Um, but the uh, the other thing is that you know, I think that sometimes we spend a lot of effort thinking about uh, what the what can be done for us. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that I was really struck by in how you've approached it is you've also thought, well, what can we do too? Absolutely. So the uh, approach to diet, the fact that there's a link to type 2 diabetes and therefore it's vital that, that diet and exercise are part of preventing yeah. things getting worse. Uh, I think that's a really important area that we need to do more on as yeah. a society. Definitely. And then the other area, of course, is um, this question of knowing when people have got a predisposition, yeah. which can be, which we can increasingly find out through uh, genomics and yes. understanding the, yeah. the data. It's very personal, and one of the things that I've become aware of as well is when it comes to heart failure specifically, there's, there's a very large lack of knowledge yes. when it comes to it, despite the fact that there are nearly one million people suffering from it, and it's become one of our biggest 
contenders in yes. healthcare. Yes. Um, what I find very interesting in our journey is that you have this gold standard of um, response to cancer and cancer treatment, whereas the overall holistic care of um, the mental health side of it, the financial support, the yes. actual healthcare itself, uh, with heart failure, we've had to fight almost every step of the way for yeah. support. Um, you know, we've become a one-income family. We haven't had the um, the counselling support that Sunil has needed because he's gone from being a active member of society and and full and to to a, to a man who is essentially dependent upon so many people, yes. and that's a big struggle. And I'm wondering how we can help this become more prevalent in people's minds and for people to recognize it more. Yes, well I think that it's really important that you keep making the case in the yeah. way that you do. Yeah. Um, and um, I think there's more that we need to do across the board. Yeah. We need to tackle this sense of fatalism yes. around heart disease. Yeah. That it's something that happens to some people and that's that. Yeah. Actually, there's an awful lot that we can do about it. You cannot deny the patient's voice. I've got so much admiration for Sunil. He got to stand up at the Cardiovascular Society annual conference. It was such a proud moment for me just to see it, all of this culminate in him standing up there and telling his story and challenging them to do better. You can do this. Six months after my MI, I was not expected to be around. I was given 48 hours, that expired. I was given two weeks, that expired. Statistically, I was told you would not make it past Christmas. I'm here, four Christmases on. <laughs> oh my God. It's a bit high, isn't it? Yeah, okay, let's go. Okay. This boils down to perception. I've been fortunate to meet other sufferers like myself who explain to me sometimes their own families themselves don't understand. If they don't understand, there is a problem. GPs don't understand, there is an awareness problem. We all must have feelings on the word failure. My feelings are I've got heart failure. My heart has failed. I'm not used to failing. Where did I go wrong? The heart is more than a pump. It holds your hopes, your dreams, your family and their futures. When I lay on that table, all my arteries blocked. And people asked me, how are you still alive? I just said, didn't want to die. You did it! It's a privilege to look after Sunil and Claire and his child. It's a privilege to look after people. He drives us to excellence. You drive us to excellence. It's a pleasure to be excellence. Thank you. Only when you focus down to what's really important in life, that's what makes it really meaningful. And people like Sunil are the epitome of going through that journey. I can't tell you how he lifts me up in the work that I do. Today, what I did today, to most people, are just a set of steps. For me, I climbed a mountain. There are two people in my life who will never ever forget this experience. Well done, Daddy. You did it! Way. Straight back up again, come on. Well done to you too. To get home, you have to go straight back up again. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Forgot to press record. Forgot to do it again. Uh, oh, we forgot to do it again.